It's time for Medical Monday on uh, E-Radio with uh, Dr. Dylan Joseph, ophthalmologist, chatting to us again today. And uh, last week we discussed uh, YAG laser and the application. And uh, this week uh, we're doing a follow-up on that. Uh, a very big hello to you, Dr. Joseph. Yes, hi there, Ian. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Excellent. Yeah, no, good. Uh, been interesting uh, using some of the laser applications for what we're going to be talking about. Um, and uh, it's funny how things uh, just suddenly pop up in practice when uh, when you're talking about them. Absolutely. So uh, moving on now from last week's discussion, mm. what are the other yeah. applications that you briefly mentioned that we can use YAG laser for? Okay, so yeah, we, we last week we dedicated to YAG laser capsulotomy, which is for after cataracts. And the other two applications um, that we can use the YAG laser for is in a, a patient that has very narrow drainage angles. Now, we will have to go back to episode one or two about anatomy and talking about the drainage angles of the eye. Um, but basically, the eye is like a, a closed system, a closed tap and sink and drain system. There's always equilibrium between what's being produced and outflow. Um, in narrow angles, it doesn't necessarily mean that you've got high pressure but if clinically the outflow structures are potentially threatened, we do a little hole or create a little hole with a laser in the iris to um, act as an escape conduit, an escape channel for fluid in case those natural drainage angles become closed. Um, on the same side, actually, with angle closure glaucoma, we can perform an, a, a YAG laser iridotomy. So also put a hole in the iris. It's exactly the same procedures with narrow angles. And that helps alleviate the pressure gradient behind and in front of the iris. So you can help with the outflow of water through the natural um, channels. What it also does by doing a hole in the iris is it deepens the, the whole area between the back of the cornea and the front of the iris. So forcing open those drainage angles. So a, apart from being a, a curative or therapeutic procedure, it actually helps restore anatomy. And we can, to a certain degree, see that on pre-laser um, uh, images and post-laser images of the front of the eye when we talk about the fluid volume that's in the front of the eye, the actual physical angle that we can measure. Um, so those metrics we follow closely. So it has great applications in um, uh, narrow angles and angle closure glaucoma. And those are the two that we see uh, not really frequently, but it's very important to, to pick it up. I mean, I've just seen a patient today who came in for a laser vision correction screening and ends up with narrow angles and runs a 30% risk in their lifetime that they may end up with a, a sudden pressure spike in their eye if we don't do something about it, if we don't make a small um, hole in the iris. And these patients can still go on to have laser vision correction procedures or a vision correction procedure, but it's just about managing the first problem before we can tackle the vision. Um, so those are the, the, the major applications with regards um, and narrow angles and angle closure glaucoma. There is another application um, where we can actually use the laser to break up uh, what we call floaters inside the eye. And I'm mm. sure everyone's heard of the floaters, um, which is uh, just protein deposits in the jelly. And some can be big and some can look like strands and wisps. But depending on their size and their location, you can use the laser to break these up. Um, sometimes they break them into smaller pieces, and instead of seeing one big floater, you can see a lot of small ones. But most of the time, they do bump them out the way to make them visually insignificant for uh, for the patient. Okay, very interesting. I was going to ask you about the floaters. I'm glad you, you brought it up. Uh, in yeah. terms of risk factors, uh, what are we looking at? Yeah. So the risk factors are very, very few and far between, and the complications are few and far between. Um you know, putting a hole in the iris, so the iris is very vascular, so you can inadvertently hit a blood vessel, but that often stops within the first few minutes, and um, we can actually put pressure on the eye to stop that if it happens. Uh, so it's something that we can treat straight away. You can get a transient rise in pressure in the eye, um, which we treat with uh, drops to bring down the pressure in the eye afterwards, and that usually doesn't last longer than 24 hours. And um, inflammation. I mean, you are releasing some pigment from the iris, so you can get a slight inflammatory response. So we do use an anti-inflammatory drop just to control that. Um, and we watch that over four or five days, and it usually doesn't cause any long-term side effects. So actually, it is a very, very safe procedure. I mean, if, if the holes are performed uh, 
in between the eyelids, that can be a problem because sometimes if they're too big, they can cause double vision uh, or people can um, uh, complain about glare. Um, but we specifically choose spots under the upper eyelid. So they're visually insignificant, essentially. Okay, so we can't see it with uh, the naked eye. And no, no, you ha- actually have to look under high magnification to see this. And sometimes using a procedure called retroillumination, where we throw a light through the eye, it can actually bounce back off the back of the eye and we can see see the illumination through the small hole. They're really microscopic holes, um, probably half a millimeter, to a mil- you know, less than half a millimeter in diameter, most of them, um, and certainly not uh, visible to the naked eye now. Okay. And then lastly, in terms of cost, what are we looking at? Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a tricky one when it's narrow angles because it's not classified as glaucoma, so it's not a prescribed minimum benefit, and medical aids are probably not obliged to pay for it then. But whether it's for narrow angles or whether it's for glaucoma or floaters, um, we do those um, procedures at the patient's medical aid rate, uh, including the higher fee of the machine. So, you know, whether you're on Fed Health or Discovery or um, ProfMed, we, we charge that laser fee at your medical aid rate. Okay, well, that's great. Dr. Joseph, if we want to come and see you to talk about uh, having uh, some YAG laser done or any other procedures, how do we get in touch with you? Just uh, remind us. Okay, and yeah, so we're based in Meisner at the Advanced Health Surgical Center. It's for Barracuda Street. Our landline is 044-150-0085, and you can chat to our patient liaison, Officer Mariska, and she'll be able to help you with those questions as well. And we do have a website, www.drdillonjoseph.com, drdillonjoseph.com, and we've got a whole bunch of great videos explaining a lot of procedures on our YouTube channel, and we have a social media channel uh, in the form of uh, Instagram and um, Facebook. So go and like us, go and follow us, uh, go and listen to some of those threads and let us know if you've got any questions. Yes, uh, it's a nice, it's almost like a library of knowledge just uh, waiting yeah. for you to explore it, including the podcast. Yes. So uh, yes, be sure to make use of it. Uh, enjoy the rest Great. of the week. Thank you, Jan. You too. Thank Have you. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. Cheerio.